So in the last two years, this has happened. This is my pipe collection, and it's probably about as big as I want it to get for a while. Two of them were given to me as gifts. Another two I got from a local antique store. Four of them I purchased from local tobacco shops, and the rest I got from online retailers. With the exception of one that was given to me as a gift, these pipes are all factory pipes of one sort or another, which I don't think is bad. I'm very happy with nearly all of these pipes, and have already dedicated certain ones to different kinds of tobaccos and such. But the one thing that I wanted, but didn't yet have, was a pipe that was all my own. By which I mean a custom carved pipe, made under my own commission, and with my own design input. Fortunately, a pipe carver by the name of Jared Coles lives very close to my neighborhood. Jared makes lovely pipes that I have admired for some time. So when he signaled to me that he would be interested in working on a collaboration design, I jumped at the chance. So I pitched to Jared the idea of incorporating the features of the gazelle's horn into this classic shape. He liked the idea, and we got to work. In the process of design, we did jettison the Zulu shape, however, for reasons I will explain. To make a pipe with the gazelle's horn as inspiration, I wanted to focus on three main things. First, they are slender. Second, they are asymmetrical as well as curved, and by asymmetrical I mean that their base is not a perfect circle. And lastly, they have a distinct ribbed or rippled pattern. I thought we could mimic this pattern by carving the pipe on a perpendicular line to the grain and then giving it a deep sandblast followed by a black finish. This is why we didn't stick with the Zulu shape or follow the overall shape of the horn itself. In order to get the sandblast right, the shape of the pipe would need to follow the grain of the wood. And like many people, I prefer small, lightweight pipes. The first thing that we had to do was to select a piece of briar wood. We needed a piece of wood that had a loose grain, that is to say, a less dense piece of burl that would give us the deep, craggy sandblast that we were looking for. So I bisected it, and that's yep. the central line, and all these side lines are the, the axes of the bowl, the mortise, and the airway. Mm -hmm. And I glued pieces of briar where they're going to meet. So now all I have to do is place this point on the, that, where those lines meet, and I have my perfect mortise line. There we go. All right. So mortise first, airway second. Airway 
the drill. There go. Oh, there you go. You hit it. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to do a second pilot in preparation for the spoon bit. And now, the most exciting part, the finishing move. And you made this tool yourself, which is I pretty did. cool, the, the spoon. From iron and brawn. <laughs> Perfection. All right. Perfection. Yeah. Nice clean chamber. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so because these the stem and the pipe are going to fit flush together, mm -hmm. we need to make sure that the surfaces are perfectly perpendicular to the the mortise line. Okay. So that's what we're going to do right now. This is what the stem will be. Mm -hmm. Yep. Starting material. And this is a, a rod of ebonite. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this will go fairly quick. Um, or slow. Now it'll go quick. <laughs> I can smell the rubber burning a little bit. Yeah, yeah it's neat. You can smell the sulfur. Uh, sulfur is one of the main components when you, when you make ebonite. So that's where the mm -hmm. igni smell is coming from. Or burnt hair. dimension. It looks really small in comparison with the with the rest of the rod, but this is going to be <clears throat> the actual part that you put in your mouth here. So that'll get widened out and flattened. But that's all the preparation you need for the bit. Okay. So now, we we'll prepare for the, the Delrin tenon. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but now I'm producing a finish that's almost 
kind of like a mirror quality. Okay, so now we'll we'll uh, drill a hole that the Teflon thing will go into. Now I'm going to groove the inside of it so that when I put the epoxy in and I groove the tenon material, they'll kind of they'll lock in. Okay. And this is a tapered bit. That is, this, it starts out as the same size as your airway bit. Yep. And it'll taper down to the same size that that tiny little bit was. Ah, towards the mouthpiece. So you get a, all the fluid dynamics work. The turbulence is what creates poop in your pipe. Ah. And so if you can get a nice, smooth airway that tapers down and then widens out at the same time, you won't get turbulence and you won't get... So... I do um, epoxy and a mechanical fit. That's why I have to force it in with the tailstock. Ah, I see. So you've got the interlocking grooves, you've got the epoxy, and you've got the mechanical fit. Right off the groove. Okay. Very rough, very fast. This is 150 grit. So okay. It's, it's jumping up quite a bit. You'll be able to see all the green. And here we have me with the fitted pipe and stem prior to the sandblast and all the finishing touches. We'll leave just as Jared starts filing down the stem prior to giving it its final polish. This is what the pipe looks like after receiving its sandblast. And here we have the pipe after receiving its final finish and buffing. I couldn't be more pleased with the way this pipe looks. I showed this picture to someone at work and they actually asked me if it had been carved from a piece of animal horn. The pipe measures right about 14 centimeters or just under five and a half inches from tip to tip. And it weighs in at 28 grams or one ounce. And oh yeah, it smokes like a dream. If you're interested in seeing more of Jared's work, you can visit his website at jaredcoalspipes.com. He also has pipes for sale at smokingpipes.com. Just type Jared Coles into the search box. And if you're in Europe, you can find his work at scanpipes.com. There you can find his work listed under Pipe Makers by Name, Jared Cole's Pipes.